labeled the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay, now we're ready to introduce sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, we're going to learn the definitions of the sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, and we're lucky that there's a very useful mnemonic for remembering what sine, cosine, and tangent mean. A mnemonic is just a trick to help us remember something. Uh, the mnemonic, which you might already have heard of, is called SOKITOA. SOKITOA. For some reason, it's very easy to remember uh, that uh, mnemonic, SOKITOA. Okay, so here we have the mnemonic uh, SOKITOA. Uh, let's see how that helps us to remember what the sine, cosine, and tangent mean. Well, what this stands for is that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine, uh, cut, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And toa, the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. For example, let's write down the sine of theta. Well, so, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. How about the cosine? The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Cut. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent? Toa. The tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Again, I'm using ADJ as an abbreviation for adjacent, OPP as an abbreviation for opposite, and HYP as an abbreviation for hypotenuse. So I hope you can see where SOKOTOA comes in. Sine is opposite over adjacent, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, cut, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, TOA. So this is a very useful mnemonic, and I really encourage you, uh, don't be too proud to say this mnemonic underneath your breath every time you use sine, cosine, or tangent. Uh, I've been doing uh, these types of problems for I don't know how long, and I still say SOKOTOA under my breath when I'm trying to decide whether to use the sine, the cosine, or the tangent. So this mnemonic is our friend. You should get into the habit of always using it. All right, so now we've defined what we mean by the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, and the tangent of theta. And we've seen how we can use the SOKOTOA mnemonic to help us pretty easily remember. So you can see sine, cosine, and tangent are all ratios or fractions. Uh, and SOKOTOA reminds us what to put on the top of each fraction and what to put on the bottom of each fraction. For example, for the sine, we put the opposite side on the top of the fraction and the hypotenuse on the bottom of the fraction. That's what SO stands for. So let's try to find the sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta for this triangle. Uh, pause the video and see if you can do that. I hope you gave that a shot. Well, first of all, let's label the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Let's label the adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. Now we clearly can see here that we're focusing on theta. We're focusing on sine, cosine, and tangent of theta. I've already put in the asterisk to remind me that we're focusing on theta. Well, this five represents the hypotenuse. The horizontal leg is adjacent to theta. And this vertical leg is opposite to theta. Now we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's what so stands for, opposite over hypotenuse. Well, what's our number for the opposite side? Four. And what's our number for the hypotenuse? Five. So we could say the sine of theta is four fifths. The sine of theta is four fifths. If you want to, you can use your calculator to make that into a decimal, and you could say the sine of theta is 0.8. So congratulations, we figured out our first sine. The sine of theta here is 0.8. Well, now we should see how to do that for the cosine of theta. Cut. 
adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, the adjacent side here is the number 3, and the hypotenuse is the number 5. So we could say that the cosine of theta is 3 fifths, or if you prefer decimals, you could convert this into a decimal. You could use your calculator to find that 3 fifths is 0. 0.6. The way you would convert the fraction into a decimal is just by doing the division. 3 divided by 5 is 0. 0.6. 4 divided by 5 is 0. 0.8. Cosine of theta is 0. 0.6. Well, now let's do the tangent. TOA, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent side. We've already labeled that the opposite side has a length of 4, and the adjacent side has a length of 3. So the tangent of theta is 4 thirds. Or if we do the division, 4 divided by 3, we would get approximately 1.3. The tangent is approximately 1.3. All right, so now we've figured out the sine, cosine, and tangent uh, for this triangle. The sine of theta was 0.8, the cosine of theta was 0.6, and the tangent of theta was 1.3. Uh, as I usually do um, in my video series, I'm trying to model on the, bo on the board the notation that I think that a beginning student should use. So um, I I'm intending these videos for people who are having difficulty um, using trigonometry or who are just learning trigonometry. Well, if you're having difficulty or just learning the material, um, you should be trying to use the same notation that I'm using. For example, um, label the angle that you're focusing on with an asterisk. We're not focusing on this angle up here. We're focusing on this angle. How did I know? Because I asked you for the sine of theta. And theta is down here. So label that with an asterisk. And then I would encourage you to physically label the hypotenuse, the adjacent, and the opposite sides. Actually write down which side is the hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite sides. And then when you're figuring out sine, cosine, and tangent, don't just plug in. Instead, start by writing the general formula. Notice how I started with the general formulas, opposite over hypotenuse, or adjacent over hypotenuse, or opposite over adjacent, and only then did I plug in. Um, so I encourage you, what, when you're doing these problems at the beginning, to try to imitate uh, on your own exactly the notation that I'm using. That's the way to learn the material the quickest and to avoid careless mistakes. Um, so label the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse sides and start by writing the general formula before you plug in. Now eventually the goal is to get to the point where these problems are so easy for you that you don't need all this notation. Eventually you'll get to the point where you can see which sides are opposite and adjacent in your head and then you won't need to label them anymore. And eventually you'll get to the point where you don't need to write the general formula. You can just start plugging in. Um, but uh, until you do feel comfortable with the material, if you find that you're making mistakes or just careless mistakes, I encourage you to use the notation that I'm showing in the videos. Um, and then eventually when you start to feel more comfortable with the material, you can start to skip steps and use less of the notation. Uh, but for beginning students that are finding this material difficult or who find that they make many careless mistakes, I would encourage you to imitate in your notation the exact notation that I'm going to be using on the board for these problems. Please pause the video and try to find sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. If you're finding these problems difficult, try to use the exact notation that I used for the previous problem. Again, if you find these uh, problems challenging, I encourage you to use the, use the same notation. Uh, if you were going to do that, your first step would be to put an asterisk here to remind yourself that you're focusing on this angle of theta. Uh, okay, uh, and then we would start by writing the general formulas. Well, so, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cut, the cosine, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And toa, the tangent, is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Don't plug in until you've written the general formulas. Something else that maybe I should already have done was labeled the sides here. Well, we know the 13 is the hypotenuse because it's opposite to the right angle. Now, this 5 here is the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the asterisk. And you can see that the 12 is opposite to the asterisk. So that's another part of the notation I would encourage you to use until you get more comfortable with these problems. Now it should be pretty straightforward to plug in. Opposite over hypotenuse is 12 over 13. Adjacent over hypotenuse is 5 over 13. And opposite over adjacent is 12 over 5. 
you could just leave the answers like this. The sine of theta is 12 thirteenths, the cosine of theta is 5 thirteenths, and the tangent of theta is 12 fifths. Or you could use your calculator to turn these into decimals. 12 divided by 13 is 0.92. 5 divided by 13 is 0.38. And 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. Some of these numbers are just approximate. Uh, by the way, I might mention that I'm not going to be dealing with significant figures in this series of videos. Um, so I'm not going to be rounding things off to the correct numbers of significant figures. I'm just going to round things off to what feels good. Okay, so the sine of theta is 0.92, the cosine of theta is 0.38, and the tangent of theta is 2.4. So I hope that none of those gave you much difficulty. Uh, but if they did, here's a good notation to use for that type of problem. 